Okay, so we're going to do two more things today. Uh, first thing we're going to do is make it so that when we move left, the character turns to face left, and then when we move right, the character faces right. And then we're going to get jumping working and make it so that we can uh, jump once, jump twice, make it so that we can only jump when we're touching ground, make it so that we can jump even if we're not touching ground, but we haven't jumped yet, and all, and all that fun stuff. So let's, let's just get into it. Okay, so to make it so the character faces the, the right direction, we need to first declare a private bool that we're going to call is uh, facing right. And what this is going to do is keep track of if the, car if the character is currently facing right or not. And uh, for, this, for this, we're going to make it so the character always spawns facing right. So by default, this is going to equal true. Now to change the direction that the character is facing is quite simple. All we're going to do is write a new function. We're going to call it void uh, flip. And in this function, we're going to set is facing right equal to not, yeah, not uh, is facing right. And then we need to rotate the, the sprite or the game object 180 degrees on the y axis so it faces the other direction. There's another way to do this. You can invert the um, you can invert the game object scale. So you set it to negative one or positive one based on which direction you want to face. Uh, there's just a little problem with that, where if you have a, another game object as a child of your character, say it's a spawn position for if you're trying to shoot something, if you just invert the scale, that game object will be on the other side of the character, but it'll still be facing the same direction as before. So if you're facing left and the game object before was pointing right and you're trying to shoot something, it'll still be shooting right. Whereas if you flip it on the, or rotate it on the Y, on the Y axis, the game objects attached to this uh, character or the player game object will also rotate around. So they'll be facing the different, uh, the other direction. Now to rotate, to rotate it, it's quite, e it's quite easy. We just say uh, transform dot rotate. And then we give the, uh, we give floats for the different angles, so it's just 0 degrees on the x-axis, uh, 180 degrees on the y-axis, and 0 degrees on the z-axis. And that's all we need to do. Um, now in the update function, we need to keep track of uh, which direction we're facing, or we need to check which direction we're facing, which direction we're trying to move, and then rotate the character accordingly. So it's a very simple if statement. We're going to say if is facing right and movement direction is greater than zero, we're going to call flip and then else if is not facing right. Wait, let me just check this. Is, is facing your right and movement direction is less than zero. So if the character is currently facing right and we're trying to move left, flip the character so he faces left. And if is facing left, and we're trying to uh, we're trying to move right, flip the character. Okay, simple as that. So let's, let's, uh, let's try that out. So as you can see, when we move right, the character faces right. When we move left, the character faces left. Perfect. Okay, now to do jumping. Okay, so to take care of jumping, we are going to write a jump function as well. I'm just going to call it void jump. And then in update, we are now, here, let me just really add some comments. So, okay, so we're going to check, uh, check the jump input. And all we're going to say is if input dot get button down we're going to say input dot get button down and the button name is jump uh, by default jump is bound to the space uh, space key in the unity settings so that's convenient and nice for us and so whenever we push the space bar we just want to call the jump function simple as that. 
Okay, now, so, so in the jump function, what happens is we want to start off by setting the rigid body dot velocity equal to a new vector two, uh, rigid body dot velocity dot x and zero. So the reason we have this line here is because we're jumping using add force, what happens is if, if your character is busy falling and you want him to be able to jump mid air, uh, if the force you're adding to the jump isn't enough to cancel out the current velocity that it has going downwards because of gravity, the jump is very, eh, it just doesn't jump very well. So if we first set the, the Y velocity back to zero so it doesn't move at all and then jump, you always get the same nice jump feel every time you try and jump. So after this, we're going to create a new vector two and we're going to call this jump force uh, to add. I'm going to set this equal to a new vector2. And on the x-axis, we're going to set it to 0 because we don't want to add any force on the x-axis. And then in the y-axis, we're going to set this equal to uh, jump force, which is... Uh, on the y-axis, we're going to set this equal to jump force, which is a variable that we're going to declare now. I'm going to set it up here as well with the floats. We're going to call this public float... I'm really bad at typing when I record. So it's equal to jump force. So now we can also set this in the inspector to whatever we want. Now we need to add this jump force to the rigid body. So we're gonna say rigid body dot add force. Jump force to add. And to get a better feel out of the jumping, we're go also going to make this force mode 2D dot impulse. So this should work now. set a jump force. As you can see, when we push spacebar, the character jumps and comes back down. Now, the only problem is, is if you keep pressing space, the character <laughs> continuously jumps, and this also happens. As you can see, the character fell down, and now he is stuck in the ground collider. To fix this, all we have to do is change collision detection over here from discrete to continuous. And now the character will, no matter how fast he falls, he won't go through the uh, go through other colliders. Okay, so now to fix the um, the infinite jumping, all we have to do is set a create another private bool, and we're going to call this can jump. And by default, we're going to set this equal to true. And now. In the in the jump function, we're gonna say if uh, if can jump, then run these lines of code. And then after we've jumped, we're going to set can jump equal to false. So now you'll see that when we jump. So now you'll see that when we uh, when we jump, we've jumped once, and if I keep pressing spacebar, nothing happens. But this is also not exactly what we want. So now we need to um, somehow detect when we've landed back on the ground. And this is quite simple to do. Um, the first thing we need to do is on our player, we need to say we need to right click and say create empty. So now we have a child game object on the character, and we're gonna call this uh, ground detection. Or no, 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 ground check. So this game object is called ground check. And as you can see, it's placed right here by the feet. This is not quite where we want it, but we'll move it uh, in a sec. Okay, so now back in our code, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna create a private bool. And we're gonna call it is, is grounded. And so this variable is going to keep track of whether the character is currently touching ground or not. The way we're going to detect if the character is currently ground or not is in fixed update. We're going to come here and we're going to say is uh, is grounded is equal to physics 2d dot 
physics 2 dovrlap circle. And in this, we're going to give it a, a point, which is gonna be the, uh, the ground check child object that we made. So up here, we also need to declare a um, public transform. And we're gonna call this ground check. And so we're gonna say over here, ground check dot position. And the radius is something, another thing we're gonna clear up here. We're gonna say public float ground check radius. We're gonna pass that in here. Ground check radius. Now lastly, we can pass in a layer mask as well. Now what that is, is it basically tells the, the overlap circle what, what it needs to be looking for. So if we have different types of objects that the ground check can pick up, or we don't want it to know, or we don't, we don't want it to think it's ground, we can specify what is ground. And the way we do that is by creating a uh, public layer mask, and we'll call this what is ground, and we'll pass that into this as well. We call this We'll say what is ground. Okay, now back in the inspector, if we click on player, as you can, as you can see here by the script, here's the script, <laughs> as you can see by the script, we get this drop down menu of what is ground. And these are all the different layers that we can assign to the different game objects. So if we come to tile map and we go to layer and we say add layer, we're going to add a layer called uh, ground going to assign that layer to to the ground and then in player we're gonna go to go to the actually, no, I'm just gonna close this down okay so back in player we're gonna come to what is ground I want to set ground so now the overlap circle is only going to detect ground over here by the ground check we're gonna pass this game object the child game object in there and for ground check radius uh, I'm gonna give it the same radius as the circle. I'll show you in a sec why. So you have one, one, three, five. Yep. Okay. Now we also want to uh, move this game object to be in the center of this circle as well. So this circle has a Y position of 135, of course. So we're just gonna move this up on Y by 0.135. Perfect. So now this game object, or now the ground check is happening right on this bottom circle. So now we have ground check working. Now all we need to do is back in our script, say when the character touches ground, uh, set can jump equal to true. Okay, so how we do that is in update, we say if is grounded, then we can set can jump back equal to true. Now there's a little bug that I, I got uh, sometimes, <laughs> uh, not always, not every time that I've done this before. I'm gonna see if it happens now, and if it does, I'll show you how to fix it. Well, I'll show you how to fix it anyway. So we jump, you can see once we land, we can jump again. So this is working, we can turn to look different directions. As you can see now, when I jump and I press spacebar again, I can still jump. And I'm not 100% sure why this, or how this works, or how else to fix this. But what I suspect happens is when I jump, it's still detect in that split second there after I jump, it's still detecting is grounded as true. So it's setting can jump back equal to true. So it makes it so I can jump again. Now how I went about fixing this is in my code, in this if condition here, I also, I just set and rigidbody.velocity.y is less than or equal to zero. So what this does is when the character jumps, the Y velocity is gonna be greater than zero because it's moving up. So it, it'll be detecting that it's still grounded for that split second, but the velocity won't be less than or equal to zero. So it won't set can jump equal to true again. So if we try this now. Okay, so as you'll see now, when we play the game, the character can only jump once and it resets uh, once we hit the ground. So this is also, this script currently also allows you that if you jumped off an edge, you could still jump again. 
or you, you could if you sorry if you walked off an edge and you were falling you'd still be able to jump once even if you're not touching ground so if you want to make it so that you can jump if you if you're not touching ground which i'm not going to do but just if you want to know how to do that over here for the jump conditional you can just say and is is grounded so if you say that the character will only be able to jump when it's touching ground but i found for a platformer that's not as it's like it doesn't have a nice feel to it but that's what you want to do if uh if that's what you want okay okay so now the last thing we're gonna do is add the ability to jump more than once so double jumping triple jumping we're gonna make it so you can set it to jump as many times as you want and to do this it's very simple so all we want to do is start off by declaring a public int uh, extra jumps okay so this is going to store the amount of extra jumps we have so we will always have one jump so if extra jump equals one we'll be able to jump twice if extra jump equals two we'll be able to jump three times uh, and then we're also going to declare a um, private int we're going to call this extra jumps left so in start we're going to set extra jumps left equal to extra jumps okay perfect we're going to come back to the jump function and here where it says can jump we say can jump or extra jumps left is greater than or equal to zero okay and then inside of the function or inside of this body after we set can jump equal to false we're going to say extra jumps left minus minus so every time we jump we're going to subtract one from the amount of jumps we have left so now if we go back to the co uh, back to the game we just stop it here and in the in the script we give ourselves one extra jump so this should make it so we can jump twice as you can see we can oh whoops i made a mistake here okay so after um over here where we see if the character can can jump again we're going to set extra jumps left back equal to extra jumps and so if you play it now you can jump twice as many times as you want so for the double jumping uh, with my script if you want to make it so you can jump when you're not touching ground uh, this this won't work there should there, there you can definitely make it work so you can have like another little body here and so the ones for the first uh so you can only jump the first time when you're grounded and then the second time you can keep track of if you've jumped for the first time and then double jump triple jump whatever you want to do but i'm not going to get into that if you want me to uh show you how to do that i'll make a, another little video on it but for now this is all we need so okay okay that does it for this video we've made it so that the character faces the direction we move we've made it so the character can jump jump multiple times so next we're going to put in the wall sliding and then wall jumping which is super exciting if you found this useful uh, please let me know if there's anything else if there's anything you don't understand you want me to explain better uh yeah just let me know and i'll, I'll try my best and i uh, hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you next time